Go ahead. All right. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. We are Piotr and Gies Goes. And we are from Enforcer Occupy, uh, from Rotterdam, from the Erasmus University. And I would like to pass on to you. Yes. So who are we? We are a collective of multiple organizations and individuals. Uh, amongst us are anarchists, uh, people from XR, people from University Rebellion and many more people, including staff members. Um, and together we organize a very horizontal and plenary space where all opinions are valued equally and where we, have, where we can have open discussions. Uh, and I think this is very important to us uh, because we reject the current power structures that are in place. We reject uh, policing each other. We actually vouch for an abolitionist space. And then what we are. Well, we are a group that occupies a university. Uh, specifically in our case, we occupy the Erasmus University in Rotterdam. Uh, we do this with, with much joy. Uh, <laughs> The executive board does not experience that joy with us. Um, and we, the first time we did this was in November, one day after my birthday. Uh, and <laughs> this was our first. Um, this was our first occupation. I think at this moment we were having a panel discussion on uh, where we would see the university in the future. Yes. And I was making coffee. Martha. Yes, very important. Uh, our our uh, comrade coffee. Yeah. Yes, comrade coffee. Um, and basically, what we do then is we sit in the building, we disrupt studying, uh, and we disrupt the uh, status quo of the university, and we stay until our demands are met or we are forcefully removed, because we stand up for our rights, and it's up for them to meet them. And then the second time we occupied was in uh, February. Then we occupied a different building. You will see photos of it later. Um, and we stayed the night, actually. So uh, some people, I think 24 people, slept in the university. But still, our, uh, our demands weren't met. Um, so, uh, <laughs> that's not nice. Yes, and speaking of those demands, we've got four main demands, which are, of course, ending fossil, because we're end fossil occupy. And what that entails for us is particularly the university cutting ties with the fossil fuel industry, because our goal is to cut off the knowledge supply from the fossil fuel industry. We, all stu we study at a very neoliberal institution with tons of ties to this industry and shall host pizza parties and all sorts of fun things at our universities, and we want them to stop. Um, and we have experience that kindly asking doesn't really work. Um, so we do it in different ways. But we also find it important to engage with different struggles and agitate against different things, which are, among other things, precarity, and, and that being said, precarity of staff. So um, in the Netherlands, it is so that, especially like the, uh, the staff that is lower in the institution, is very precarious, they have very um, short contracts, they are underpaid, structurally overworked, and this also hinges on the academic freedom. Because a lot of funding actually goes to, the, to certain sectors of the university, um, which undermines the academic freedom. Then we also agitate against student debt. We want the, uni we want the university to step up and um, act politically to end all student debt for all students in the Netherlands, and we want our university at last to be an accessible place for everyone for all staff, for all students. But in all fairness, these demands are, of course, really nice. But what we are also doing at the same time, which is m much more important, is creating a space which is not a univers university that is rooted in colonialism, that is not a university that is rooted in exploitation, not in capitalism, but an island outside of capitalism, where we can all be together and envision a different future. <laughs> building something prefigurative and trying to actually live together joyfully and not in the daily hassle struggling for getting nice grades, even though we are still educating ourselves, but radical education. Yeah, it's very important to have fun within your activism exactly. because in a system where we are oppressed and we learn that we have to struggle to get through life, we have to work every day, 
where joy is taken from us, one of the most radical forms of activism is to have fun. <laughs> then you see the title, Talking to Authorities, crossed, we crossed it out. Do not talk to the authorities. The only thing it will do is create a very nice PR moment for them. They can say, oh, we engaged with the issues. We engaged with these activists. And then they can continue to have their own practices. So what we do, and this is also what our round table, or not our round table, but like our table will be about, is we do not engage with them. It is up to them and up to the experts in policy making to work with our demands. We are not the experts. We don't exactly know how to work these demands. We are willing to think along once they show willingness to actually meet our demands, but we are not the people to institutionalize them. And they've shown us before that they are willing to be violent towards us, that they sent the riot cops to us whilst we invited them to eat soup with us. They showed us that being dragged out is what they prefer over meeting our demands. And we are not willing to collaborate with fascist institutions like that, who engage in violence. Uh, so fuck them, basically. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, we're actually part of a much broader movement, which is um, worldwide. There have been occupations in, uh, in Africa, there have been occupations in South America and in uh, North America and tons of in Europe. And um, we've occupied over 50 universities in November, in the, I think it was... September to December. September, September to December of last year. Um, and this struggle tries to end the fossil fuel industry because we are definitely not stopping at just cutting ties. We're not only even stopping up with um, ending fossil, with getting some demands met. No, we are truly trying to fight fossil capitalism. And in order to do that, we disrupt the humanity. May we occupy? May we Late. occupy? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, the oh. way we disrupt the humanity is actually doing civil disobedience. So once we occupy, like we said before, the university doesn't like that. And they express those feelings in sending very violent riot police. Uh, me, my, I myself have been dragged out by my nose by the riot cops. Um, just before this lovely person. Um, and we are going to keep doing that. Because I can announce that in the month of May, we will be occupying again. We will be occupying again globally. And we will be occupying with hopefully over more than 100 universities worldwide. But we don't do this to just the two of us. We've got an awesome crew. And we really want to invite them here because we are in horizontally organized platform. It's not just the two of us. There's like 20 people. Occupiers. Come please, please. If you want. you're very welcome to come in our May occupations. We can see about the funding if you don't have enough money to travel there. Uh, we give you food, we give you joy. We will, there will be dancing, there will be um, funny suits, <laughs> funny Definitely. suits, a lot of lec uh, like lectures, but not really lectures, more like working groups. Feel free to come. Thank you. Woo!